There once was a crochet airframe named Tucket. Oh, family friendly. <laughs> Today, we're gonna be making bucket hats. So we're gonna bucket. <laughs> Let's begin right next. Hi, I'm Mikey from the Crochet Crowd and thank you so much for joining our channel today. I'm here to inspire you and create magic with your crochet hook. Are you ready to play? Oh yeah, that sounds good. Welcome and let's do a bucket hat together. The title of this video is the size that we're gonna be working with today. This particular pattern has several sizes including all the way from zero to six months to an adult size. You'll find a link in the more information of this video in order to find the free patterns for that. And this is designed by Sarah from Repeat Crafter Me. You can see that she has extensions that you can add to it whether it's eyes or crab claws, uh, claws or maybe even a whale. That's something that you can decide for yourself but today I'm only focusing on the basics of these hats. So I'm going to recommend a couple things. She has Super Saver as Red Heart Super Saver as her suggestion. If you are uh, knowing anything about heat, cotton is your best way to go. So Lily Sugar and Cream is the better way to go. It's 100% cotton. Cotton keeps you warm but it also keeps you cool. So this is what you would be looking at. So if you're finding acrylic in the Super Saver too hot to wear, switch over to your um, Lily Sugar and Cream. You can do Bernat Handicrafter or maybe even Peaches and Cream. We're going to be using a 5 millimeter size H crochet hook today and let's begin the size that's promised in the video title. Let's start the 6 to 12 month size. This is called a magic ring. It's also called an adjustable circle. To do it and we have tutorials just specifically on this is that you're just going to lay the yarn loosely in your hand and you're gonna use your two fingers and you're gonna wrap the yarn that is leading to the yarn ball around your two fingers and cross over the top and use your third finger to hold it in this cross formation. I'll show you one more time. We do have tutorials available as I mentioned. So in the front of your hand, two fingers, wrap and cross over and use your third finger to hold. And you want to scoop under the first one and grab this one with your five millimeter size H hook and you're going to pull through and you can slide your fingers out and just keep it open and allow the ring to be there plus the straggler yarn that you'll pull that tight later. We're then going to just chain one and that will hold that in there. And this is called country yellow for the color just in case anybody needs to ask me. So country yellow it is. I need you now to place 11 double crochets inside this ring. So when you cro uh, crochet make sure you crochet over the two strands directly. And so you're just going to double crochet over that. And so we'll count those out together. So we have one double crochet, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten and eleven. As soon as you have your eleven I want you to verify the count before you do anything. So you're gonna start with your first one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Once confirmed just pull this slightly. It's a straggler. That'll close the ring a little bit and I need you to slip stitch to the top of the first double crochet. If you're not sure just count it back from the hook. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and 11. And the 11th one back is where you'll do your slip stitch to join. Once it's joined pull up a large loop and let your hook come out. And I want you to turn it over and this strand here is part of your magic circle or your adjustable circle or magic ring and you're just going to pull on it and it's gonna pull that center tight and shut. Now you can't just trim this yarn now because it'll fall out. So you need to put this into a tapestry needle and you need just to scoop up underneath. This is still the back side of the circle and when you drag this yarn through you should never see that going through the front side. So just stay in the fibers in the back and you're gonna drag it through the first time once. Pull tight. A a slightly different path. If you separate uh, fibers itself instead of just going between strands it'll be even better. So you'll go through twice 
and then third time is a charm. And once you think it's in good enough you can just trim your yarn down and you can turn this back over to the good side. You can put your hook back in and you can pull things nice and tight and the center ring is nice and closed. And we're now going to officially move on to round number two. Let's move on to round number two. It state, states in the instructions that we chain two at the end of an instruction. The way that I teach I always chain my stuff in the beginning of a of an instruction. So chain two and that's not gonna count as a stitch. It's just a builder. And I'm also going to show you a cheating technique at the end of this rotation which you can use on every rotation going for, uh, for this whole thing. In the same one that you have the slip stitch I need you to place in two double crochets in it. And the next stitch two double crochets as well. So you're just gonna apply two double crochet into each stitch all the way around. You'll have a total count of 22 double crochets but I'm gonna show you a cheating technique when you get all the way around and I'll be right back in a moment. So please continue around. So I'm coming all the way around. There's actually just one stitch left even though it appears to be two. This is where new crochets mess up and add stitches when they shouldn't. So in the last one here you technically just can just put in two double crochets because that's what's needed and then you have your 22 and then you join to the top of the beginning double crochet. The problem is, is see this gapping space? That always will exist every time. So here's my tip for you and this is not in any written instructions. This is just a tip. So in the last one we have to put two double crochets in. So just put the first one and now the next one that we put in there we wanna join it to this one is at the same time. So we're going to do a two together double crochet to do that. So you're gonna start by putting the second one in. So yarn over going in, pull through, pull through two and hold. Now I want this you to go into this space right here. And just yarn over going in, pull through, pull through two and hold. And now we're gonna pull through all three and that makes it a two together so you still only have one stitch that is making up that very last one that you put in. So you're not changing the stitch counts but what you've done is that this leg here of the two together is going to fill in that space so that you'll never see it. And then you can slip stitch to the top of the beginning like that and voila it's gone. We're moving on to round number three next. In round number three we're gonna start a sequence and you're gonna continue to do that sequence over and over and over. You're starting by chaining two does not count as anything and in this first one here you'll place in two double crochet. You're then going to put one double crochet by itself in the next one. That's your sequence. So let's repeat. The next one will have two double crochets in it. They share the same stitch and the next double crochet is all by itself. So please continue to repeat that sequence around for round number three. So finishing up round number three there's just one into the very last one. That's just keeping in the sequence but I'm gonna do my little trick of the two together with that one plus the space and therefore that will fill that space in like that. And then you can just join to the top of the first double crochet. See no space. Let's begin number four. Let's begin number four. You're going to chain two. Won't count as anything and in the same first one you'll apply two double crochet. The next two are all by themselves. So double crochet in the next two stitches. So one by itself and two by itself. Okay. So here's the sequence to go around. You'll place in two double crochets into the same stitch and then the next one these next two are one double crochet by itself. So one by itself, two by itself and you'll repeat that around for round number four. I'll see you at the end of the round. Picking you up on the end of number four there's two by itself but I'm gonna do my secret little thing with my last one again putting it together to hide in that space. Okay and join. So let's uh, begin number five. So let's begin number five. We're going to do a small increase just to get it to the um, size that you need and what we're going to do is that we're going to apply uh, chain two to start and you'll put two double crochets into the first. Okay. 
Once you have that done, the next 10 will be one double crochet by itself. So let's count those out together. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So the sequence is two into the next one and then ten by itself and so on and go all the way around for round number five. At the end of the fifth round, this is the tenth one but I'm going to do my little thing and get that gap to be closed off and then put it together and then just attach to the first double crochet. We're going to get a little bit bigger again in round number six. So in round number six, I'm just going to tell you what it is because you kind of just did what you did and it's just, it's the same kind of sequence. So you just chain two and you'll put two into the very uh, first one. So for this one round, you're going to do 11 double crochets by itself and then um, you will then put in um, uh, two into the next and then 11 two into the next and then 11 and you'll continue to do that sequence all the way around. So I'll be right back in a moment. So I'm finishing up the uh, last round number six and the last stitch is the 11th one going in and I'm just gonna do my little thing and get that to be filled in. So let's talk uh, next about rounds number seven through 11. Here's my verbal instructions and you can do this on your own. So rounds number seven all the way through 11 is the same thing. You'll chain up two and just apply one double crochet in each stitch all the way around and when you come around you can do my little uh, trick that I have to fill in that space and then just continue along and do your rounds number all the way through 11. So please do rounds number seven through 11 now and I will pick you up on the 12th round in a moment. So let's start round number 12. We've got number 11 done. It looks like a beanie at this point and we're gonna continue our journey. We're gonna chain two. In the same beginning stitch you're going to place in two double crochet and then the next one is one double crochet by itself. So the sequence to go around is two double crochet into the next one and one double crochet into the next one after that and please do that all the way around and this will take you around number 12. Okay and coming around on number 12 and just staying in the sequence and that last stitch is by itself and I'm just gonna do my little trick and pony show. Okay, and just attach to the top of the first double crochet. Let's begin, or it's dog and pony show. <laughs> is it? I don't know. You let me know. Okay, so let's move on to number 13 and 14. Rounds number 13 and 14 are just a growth round so you just chain up with two and it's sorry, it's more of a relaxing growth round. So it's just one double crochet in each. So that allows the last um, stitches that we just did just to kind of balance itself out. So rounds number 13 and 14 is just one double crochet in each. You'll attach it when you get around and etc. And I'll pick you up on the last round, number 15 in just a moment. Okay, rounds number 13 and 14 are done and now the final round. Now some people get all antsy pantsy about doing the reverse uh, single crochet. It's also called the crab stitch. So if you don't like that stitch, just chain up one and apply one single crochet all the way around, join it and then fasten off. But I will show you how to do the crab stitch to keep it in honor of this pattern. You're going to chain one and you are going to go into the same stitch of the join. Now instead of going forward, you're gonna go backward. So you're gonna come into the last stitch that was in there and you're gonna go in, you're gonna scoop the yarn and pull through. Then you're going to yarn over, pull through the two. So instead of going forward, we're going backward. So go to the last stitch before that. Okay, and then just do that. And you'll notice after about three stitches that you'll see the texture of this stitch showcasing its beauty. See that? It almost reminds me of roping in a way and it's a great way to finish off things. So you're just gonna go all the way around with the reverse single crochet or a crab stitch and I'll be right back in a moment to weave in your ends. Okay, once you come all the way around, you just gotta slip stitch to the beginning, reverse single crochet and we're not quite done yet so just do that and then trim long enough that you can put that through a tapestry needle. So you can see how the edging looks great. So let's just pull that through. Turn it over to the other side so you're looking at the inside of the brim 
and grab your tapestry needle and remember that little trick that we did three times back and forth. We're doing that again. So when you do this the best way to do it is to kind of make sure that you split the fibers. So don't just go in between strands. Go in between fibers of the strands but make sure that you never go into the um, the opposite side of the work. Okay so just to turn it. See? You should see nothing. So just go through once and you do this a total of three times. So a slight different path going in the opposite direction. Like that. And then finally a third time is a charm. The more fibers that you can split apart the harder it is to get out. So if you ever have to frog it out meaning to rip it, rip it. It's very, very difficult in order to do that. Once you're good you can cut it right down and now you have a new hat to be able to enjoy. So this here is the 6 to 12 month size and this is slightly bigger than the newborn.